This week at Starbase, cleanup work continues at the Massey Outpost, construction continues over at Pad B as well as the site of the upcoming Giga Bay, and work progresses towards making Pad A capable of supporting ship static fires. Will everything be ready to meet SpaceX's anticipated launch date for Flight 10 next month? And how long will it be before Massey's Outpost is back online? Let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. Starting off this week with our vehicle fabrication updates, in the early hours of Friday morning, a vacuum raptor was spotted being taken into Mega Bay 2 for installation on Ship 37. As this is the fourth vacuum engine to make the transit recently, it seems that one of the previous engines may have had an issue and needed to be replaced. On Tuesday, a four-ring barrel section was brought out of Star Factory. This article was likely a development piece SpaceX built as they continue to fine-tune their fabrication hardware inside the building. This section was eventually taken to the Sanchez site for scrapping. On Wednesday and Thursday, crews could be seen working to assemble a new jig at the Sanchez site, presumably for eventual installation inside of Star Factory. On Wednesday night, rover camera panned over to the Star Factory building, giving us a peek at some new Block 3 booster hardware. This new super heavy forward dome section has an integrated and redesigned hot staging section. Unlike the expendable hot stage adapter of the current boosters, this will be a permanent part of the rocket and has diagonal bracing constructed of milled steel as opposed to the reinforced cutout vents we have seen before. Moving on to the construction at the launch complex, on Friday morning, the top plate for the super heavy liquid oxygen quick disconnect was lifted for installation on the gantry at Pad B. Over the weekend and well into Monday, concrete work was underway at the site's new pad. The work seemed to focus on the southern end of the flame trench and utilize multiple pump trucks to accommodate somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 concrete trucks. On Tuesday, a pre-assembled rebar grid was picked up by the telehandler, brought over and placed inside a freshly prepared pit right across from Rover 2 where the new D2 gate is being constructed. And late on Wednesday at Pad A, the ship quick disconnect arm was swung out, allowing the chopsticks to be raised up the tower before the arm was then swung back in. This was likely done to move the arms out of the way for the work on the launch mount. The next afternoon, the launch site's large crawler crane began moving across the site over towards Pad A as SpaceX prepared for the installation of the newly modified ship transport stand onto the launch mount ahead of the static fire of Ship 37. On Friday morning, with all preparations complete now, the lift began. The crawler crane raised the modified ship stand above the Pad A launch mount and slowly lowered it inside, bringing SpaceX one big step closer to the next launch. A short time later, a crane lifted a section of piping for installation on the Pad A launch mount, likely part of the temporary fit-out to make the Pad static fire compatible for V2 Starships. Up the road at the build site, a new small work platform was lifted into Mega Bay 2 for installation as crews continue to fit out the building. Throughout the week, piling work continued around the new Giga Bay site in preparation for the start of the building's structural footings in the near future. On Wednesday, two different white steel rings with lead-ins mounted on them were carried into the Star Factory. Over at the office, crews have been working to reinstall the previously removed sections of cladding on the building. Further up the highway at the Massey Outpost, work continues on the cleanup and the refurbishment from last month's rapid unscheduled disassembly. The week saw several tanks removed from the site's methane farm, as well as other tanks being repositioned. The site also saw some new concrete work as SpaceX works to repair damage from Ship 36. A new LR-1300 crane was also delivered to the Massey Outpost where it was later assembled and raised. Moving on to other notable deliveries for the week, on Monday what looked to be like pedestals for new jib cranes were brought to the build site and taken inside a star factory. On Thursday evening, what appeared to be a new booster quick disconnect hood was delivered to the launch complex where it was later offloaded at a staging area at the back of the site between the two pads. The design of this article, while recognizable, is quite a bit different than the hood on the pad A mount. In other Starbase news, on Sunday, one of the Mega Bay 2 bridge cranes was seen undergoing a round of recertification testing using a stack of counterweights. The city of Starbase has also announced that recently installed gates across the roads leading into the community are now operational, restricting access to the neighborhood next to the rocket development facility. 
In other space news, Firefly Aerospace announced on Friday that they have registered paperwork for a proposed initial public offering. On Monday, the Federal Communications Commission granted Rocket Lab a license for the upcoming inaugural launch on their Neutron rocket. This is not a launch license and is just one of the many pieces needed before that launch. That mission is currently expected sometime this year. Gilmore Space has again announced a delay to the maiden flight of their Eris rocket following a one-day delay by the operations team and again due to continued unfavorable weather conditions. Australia's first orbital rocket is now slated for launch no earlier than July 27th. Boeing has moved one step closer on their Artemis IV preparation checklist with the completion of the thrust structure for the exploration upper stage structural test article. This component is the first completed piece of the test article that will be used to verify that the design meets the requirements NASA has set out for the vehicle. Moving on to Florida, in the early hours of Friday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1083 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying the Drawer 1 communications satellite to geostationary transfer orbit for Israel's aerospace industry. Both the rocket and recovered fairing halves returned to port two days later for processing ahead of their return to SpaceX's Roberts Road facilities. And early on Wednesday, the Florida night sky turned to day once again as the KF-01 mission also blasted off from Space Launch Complex 40. This mission was both the first for Falcon 9 Booster 1096 and also the first mission SpaceX has launched for the competitor Amazon's Kuiper Constellation. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.